hello, we're back. And I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code to that index.html file. I should say, if you have just jumped into this video, this is part two of, or part one of <laughs> zero. I guess I'll call it part one. And then this is part two. Um, this is part two of a series of just like how to get started doing HTML and CSS. So um, we have an index.html file. It lives inside our folder, um, which is called whatever our username is on GitHub dot github dot io and um, we have just basically the words hello world um, let me get my face out of the way um, i have a port open if you don't have a port open it will look like this it will say go live um, this is an extension called live server so um, i'm going to click this and start a port open and here is my hello world file and now I am going to, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to put this on GitHub just so you can see that. So let's go to the purple app, which is this little, um, it's like an Octocat. Um, and then you should see something like this. So it should say changes one, cause we've only had one file so far. Here's our file. Um, don't ever like deselect this stuff. You always want to just kind of push everything up there. So um, in order to move, so first off, we want to create basically like a timestamp on our own computer. So I'm going to just add a comment here next to my profile image. You don't need to do anything in description, just in here. And I'll just say, um, can I, I wish I, maybe it'll just use this if I don't. But anyway, I'll just say created index page. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say, commit to main. Main is the, the branch that we're going to be using. We won't really be playing with branches, but um, you could have like multiple branches. Like let's say you're doing like a, a release of a feature. You could have like feature XYZ branch. Um, okay. So when I hit commit, it basically, it saved a history. So if I go here to history, um, you can tell I've used this repository before, but this is the one I just did. And so it's showing me the changes. If I went back here, you could see I like deleted a bunch of stuff. So here's the history of everything I've changed, but we're still only on our computer. So if I was to go back to GitHub and command R to refresh, or you can hit the little refresh wherever it is. I don't need, I have too many things in my, <laughs> um, so command R or control R on a PC will refresh your file. There's still nothing here. So let's go back to GitHub desktop, command tab, and then I'm going to read this, which says there's no local changes. They've already been committed, so there's no changes to be committed. And then this says push commits to the origin remote. So this is going to push it to GitHub. Um, and let's do it. Let's push origin. I think it's going to ask for my password. No. OK, cool. Um, and then we go back to github.com. I'm inside that repository. If I hit command R, oh, and I'm on the code tab, then there's our file. And I can even click on it and see my hello world. Okay, so we have successfully pushed our file up to GitHub. If you're having trouble at this point, just reach out to me on Slack or email me and we can work out um, what's going on. There's always weirdnesses with getting set up. All right, so this isn't really HTML. It recognizes that it's HTML because it's in a file called .html, but this is just like a plain old text file. So let's get rid of it. I'm gonna say Command A to select everything and then hit the delete key. Okay, so a cool thing about Visual Studio Code, it has all kinds of code snippet, um, like uh, what, I can't remember what they're called right now guessers. Um, but if I type exclamation point, do you see how this little thing pops up that says Emmet abbreviation? It will actually fill in the code that I need. Um, so exclamation point is how you get like basic boilerplate HTML code. So I'm going to hit enter. And here is basically everything you need to set up um, an HTML file, more or less. So I'm going to just really quickly 
Um, the first one is doc type. So this is telling the browser, hey, I'm about to give you some HTML. Um, so it's telling the browser, hey, I'm, this is a doc type of HTML. This tag is the only tag on this page that doesn't close down at the bottom. See how all of them like HTML closes, head closes, body closes. The doc type just is like initial um, declaration. Okay. The second line here that says HTML lang equals English is saying, hey, I'm going to give you some HTML now. It's going to start here, and the HTML that I'm going to give you is going to end here. This language equals English is just telling the browser this is an English language website. It isn't required, but it sure is nice because um, if you have some lorem ipsum on your site, it's going to be like, do you want me to translate this? So it's a good thing. You don't have to have it. Um, you could have an HTML tag like that, but let's leave it in. Okay. The head is like all the invisible stuff. It's how you link to other files. So we're going to be linking to like a style sheet for all of our like fonts and colors and stuff. We're going to link to it inside this head. The document, um, let's, do I have the server running? Let's get my face out of here. Close my face. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Okay, so I have the port running. Let's go look at what we've got now. So we should have an empty page. Let's see where it says document up here. That's because I haven't changed the title. So I'm going to just call it Alana's homepage. Save it. And then um, Command S will save. And then if I go back, then ta-da, there's my title. All right? Um, quick tip. If you go to file, there's a little auto save here. Please turn this on because um, it's just, it makes life so much easier. Um, if you're working on a couple different files, like your style file and an HTML file, and you don't save the style, um, I'll show you what it'll look like if you don't have auto save. Um, let's see. I'll, I'm going to just type hello world again. See that little dot? That's telling you that it's not saved yet. Um, and then if you do command S or file save, um, the dot goes away. But good um, news for us, we can just say autosave. All right, let's have some fun now. <clears throat> All right, so I'm not going to worry about linking files. Um, this meta name viewport, um, it, it tells the browser how to deal with scaling the page. So this is actually a really important tag. Things will scale really funky on mobile, especially if you don't have this um, in here. So leave that there. Character set UTF-8 is just like the US English, US, yeah, US English keyboard um, character set. All right. So the body is is basically all of this. Like the the um, the meat of the page has to be inside the body tag. This is where it lives right here. So um, that's why when I typed hello world, it shows up. Um, right here. If I was to put hello world up here, browsers kind of try to figure things out, but um, it probably won't show up at all. Oh, see, it's trying. It's trying to help you, but um, don't do it. <laughs> um, the body is where you want everything to go. So let's just start with some tags. Um, I'm going to show you a page that is going to be your best friend. This page, um, w3schools.com. And then there's a bunch of different, like if you go to HTML, it's got tutorials, there's forms, graph, graphics, m media. You could spend your whole life on this website. We're going to just stick to the references. I'm going to go to the tag list. So the tag list is just an uh, alphabetical order. Every single tag you could ever need in HTML. Believe me, we are not going to use like even a quarter of all these tags but they are here for you. This website is fantastic. And honestly, I have so much trouble getting around this site sometimes that um, if I'm searching for something, like let's say, how do I make a link? Um, I would make a, a new browser win tab and I would say W3, um, how do I link a page? Um, I guess I should say in HTML because there's other ways to do it. And it should give you a page that will help you. So in the tutorial, here's hyperlinks. It shows you how to make one, 
blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, that's usually how I search for stuff as I start with W3. Probably I should have said HTML. How do I link a page? But as long as this is in there and this is in there, um, the challenge is going to be um, figuring out, is it HTML? Is it CSS? Um, anyway, I am going to start with the beginning, which would be headers. So H1. So H1 is like the biggest header you can have. So let's just start making headers. So I'm going to say h1 sorry h1 and then um visual studio code is so nice that it actually filled in the rest of the tag so <clears throat> what is this um the browser recognizes html tags by this um less than greater than or um um i always forget the other name for them um but anyway this these these tags um it'll come to me in a minute and then inside these um, angle brackets, it's not an angle bracket, um, there is the, the tag name. So if we go back to Visual Studio, or sorry, with um, we go back here, we click on this one. H1 is the tag name. Um, and then you can see there's examples of how to do this. So um, it's the tag name and then the words that you want to be as a header one. Um, and then um, the closing tag name. This is really similar to like a Google Doc where, let me open, we'll just start a new document. So let's say, um, hi, this is a page. I'm some text. Um, this is some more text, right? So when you're in Google Docs, you can like select text and say heading one. And this, we'll just say this is heading two you're choosing a style for these things. That's exactly what we're doing in HTML. This is just like the, the Google Docs version is like, you just don't see the code behind um, what's going on here. But this kind of same thing is happening. So H1, um, welcome to my page. I don't know, I'm just typing stuff. Eventually I want you to like have a pretty homepage, um, but for now we'll just mess around. Um, it's nice here. Okay, and then you can go up to heading six. So um, usually this is the name of the page. You only want to have one H1 to a page. So a lot of times, like, you'll want to have, like, multiple sections that have the same um, styling. Sometimes you need to, like, um, either use, like, have the H2 the same size, or even better is to, like, add some styling, make, make your H1s more specific. We'll get into that later. It's CSS, but, um, should only have one H1. You can have as many H2s as you want. Um, the browser doesn't care. Um, and it also, it comes down to like, um, the better your syntax is, the better you show up on like search engine results. Um, second, or two, you get the idea. And then you could have like header three. I'm smaller, smallers. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to my, um, my browser. I don't have to click this, it's already running. I'm just gonna do command tab or control tab. Oops, um, there's my home page. So you can see that HTML is already styling things. H1 is the biggest. These two are H2, this is H3. So it goes smaller down the line. Um, there's some default styles built into HTML. Um, and then let's say I wanna have like a paragraph of text, I can do a P tag. And then this is another cool trick. Um, you can actually like tell it to give you some lorem ipsum text. If I type the word lorem and without any spaces after it, I type in a number like 10 and then I hit tab, it'll give me 10 words of lorem ipsum. How's that? Um, all right, so there's my paragraph. And then let's say I want to have an, um, a break in the text with, a ne with the next paragraph. Um, you want to have, for each chunk of text, you want to have um, a different paragraph. I'll make this one like 40 words. And then um, I always like want to start them with a different word, so I'm just going to do that. <laughs> 
Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So it's already adding some margin in between. So you don't want to do the thing, let's see, like if you're in this um, thing and you're like, this is some um, text and blah, 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 blah. Let's see, I've got this like text. Um, you know, if you do a shift return, it basically does like a single, it's, it's a, it's called a soft return. Um, it won't add spaces in between. This is kind of like what would happen if you tried to just like do a line break instead of doing different paragraphs. And the problem with this is like, then you're like, oh, I need more space. So you do a shift return. We don't have control over the height of this, but if you use paragraph tags for each chunk of text, you're going to have way more control. You're going to say, I want the margin to be this. And then you can say, oh, actually that's too much. I want it to be this. And it'll, it'll apply to every single paragraph in your whole site. And you don't have to go through and like re shift things around. So every chunk of text you want, give it its own paragraph. Um, okay. I am going so slow. Let's do some other cool, cool tricks. Um, Let's do a link. So the A tag is the link tag, but it also needs a reference. Like what, like, um, so let's say, I'll just say, click me and we can go look at this. It will be, oops, wrong thing. Um, oh, it won't be clickable because it, it doesn't know where you're, where you want it to go. But this is the start of an anchor tag, which is, um, you're anchoring to a new page is, I don't know. It's a weird word, but um, so you want to add an attribute to that. And the attribute is H R E F, which stands for hypertext reference. Oops, sorry. And then you want to say it equals to some value. So even if I do this, I think it should show up as a link. Yeah. Um, still, it doesn't know where to go. So if I click this, it's just going to it's going to do nothing. But see how there's like a default um, click state that turns red, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's make it go somewhere. Um, let's make it just go to google.com. Um, this won't work because it doesn't know, it thinks that this is a, a page. So you always need to use, if it's an external page, you need to say it's HTTP or HTTPS. Um, and that is a full URL. Um, you also can't just do like dub, dub, dub. It doesn't know what that is. It'll think it's just a page. So make sure it has HTTP colon slash slash. And then if we go here and I click it, ta-da, we will go to Google. Now you noticed it went to Google and now my page is gone. So I got to go back. Um, and now I'm back on my page. If you're linking to a, f a file or a, a website that is external to your website, you're going to want to add another attribute. And that one is called target. And that one, you're going to say target equals, and then this is weird, but you want to do underscore, which is um, sh the shift dash. And then it um, tells you some options, which is very cool. So you can say you want blank. So this is going to open a new tab um, and keep ours open. So now if I click, click me, it keeps ours open and it goes to Google here. Cool. Um, and uh, I'll, in a minute, I'll, I'll show you how to, if you want to link to a file inside your website, you just don't want this target at all. Um, okay, let's make an image. So image tags, MG is the tag. And this is um, one of the only tags, kind of like the doc type tag that doesn't have a closing tag. So the tag is IMG and then the attribute is SRC. So you want a source for your image and um, you can put files in your um, directory. We'll do that in a bit, but you can also just link to an image on the website on, on a site somewhere. So let's do that. Let's go to like, um, let's go to Giphy. Giphy. We'll just like randomly choose that's nice. Some hearts. Click on it. Let's see. Embed. So this is an iframe. I want like, um, sometimes it's hard to find the image. 
open image in a new tab. So the way to tell if it's an image is like if you scroll all the way to the end. I don't think this is a real image. It's giphy.gif, R-I-D. Um, I'm being silly. Um, we'll just make it easier on ourselves. Let's just look for raccoon. I'm going to go to images. Oh, I'm going to right click on this and say open image in a new tab. Before I do that, look at how big this is. That's going to hurt, but we'll do it anyway. Um, open image in a new tab. Just because I want to make sure that I have the right URL. Um, Chrome likes to make everything images. Okay, let's see. Um, save image as. That's not an image. It doesn't have like an extension, you know? I want, I want an image. Open image in a new tab. Gotta kind of look at the URL. It's a JPEG. Let's try this. So I see in here that it's a JPEG. It's kind of important to know what the for file format is. They're not all this hard. See, it says JPEG. Um, so let's like, well, let's try just the URL, see if it works. Um, and also like when we download it. So look how giant that is. I think. If I do just .jpg, let's just try it as it is. Do, 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 do. There you go. Okay, so we have a raccoon. We're gonna worry about sizing with CSS. I don't want you to size with HTML um, because it's not res as responsive. Um, okay, so there's the raccoon. Let's also um, save it into our folder. So I just right clicked on this. Um, same thing when I was like searching, I just did a right click. That's how you get this menu. Um, but let's save this little guy. Save image as, um, is it gonna give me a weird, I know it's a JPEG, so I'm just gonna say raccoon.jpg. Um, and then I'm gonna find my folder. So mine is in sites. Alana Reese.github.io. Um, before you go messing up your main directory, so here's my main little folder. Directory and folder are the same thing. I want to make a folder for my images. So I'm going to say new folder, images, create. Now I have an images folder in here and I want my raccoon to go in there. So I'm going to click save. And now let's try that one instead. So I'm going to get rid of this source. It's a mess. And I'm going to say, I want you to go into the images directory. So I'm going to say images slash. And then if it's working, if I'm like looking in the right place, it's actually going to show me my options for that folder. So here's raccoon. Um, and let's see if that also works. Let's close all this mess up. Uh, I don't need that anymore. Okay, here. So it looks like it, it works as well. So hooray, we found a JPEG. Um, the other thing that you want to add with your images is an alt tag. So the alt tag is basically, um, it's, it's most important for accessibility. It says, um, if you are a person who is visually impaired, this is what this image is displaying. So let's see, I'm going to say like, um, cute baby raccoon in the grass. So you want it to be um, um, as like descriptive as you can. Cute baby raccoon in the grass. Cool. Um, it also helps if like maybe I have a typo in here. Um, it will actually show you a broken image tag and then the alt tag. So you can at least tell which image is broken, which is kind of handy. Let's fix that. Okay, um, so if I have a screen reader, there's a way actually, I'll look up sometime in the term that you can turn off images so you can see what it looks like for, um, or see what it will read, I guess, for a visually impaired person. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm probably babbling too much. We're, oh my gosh, 24 minutes. All right, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna close this um, and move on to part three. Um, all right.
fairly well. 